Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. I am so excited about this video today. We've been working on this for a few months now, and it all revolves around the DOF Reality H6 that uh, we've featured several times on the channel. Well, we've had a little journey with it. We've done an upgrade, and I'm going to share all the details with you now. Stick around if you want to hear more. So, for those of you that haven't watched the channel much, we actually did a series of videos on the DOF Reality H6 when we first built it. And there were multi-parts on it. And in part two, um, I talked about why I chose the H6 over all the other motion platforms out on the marketplace. So, in that video, I talked about my biggest regret purchasing this unit. And that was that I didn't spend the extra money to get the extra motion out of the P6 instead of the H6. Well, you can imagine my surprise when DOF Reality emailed me and offered me the opportunity to purchase a brand new gearbox upgrade specifically designed to give the H6 more motion and bring it into spec with the P6. So as you can imagine, I jumped at the chance. And I've been working closely with DOF Reality ever since putting the upgrade kit together and sharing with them any issues that we found and any concerns, that type of stuff. So I'm very excited to announce these new series of videos around this SFU upgrade kit. This first one, we're just going to talk a little bit about the upgrade kit, what it is, the performance we saw from it, some of the uh, important things you need to know about it. And then in part two, we're going to go into actually building the upgrade and what it took to take the motors off of the old rig and attach the new motors to it and all the little things that we had to do to actually get it up and running. We'll also have some of the tips and tricks that we found along the way. So keep an eye out for that. In fact, if you don't want to miss any of these upcoming episodes, make sure you like and subscribe so that you get notified as soon as we release the new videos. So it's been quite a journey, as I said. Um, there's a lot to cover here, and uh, I'm excited to not only get this video done, but the whole series as well. We've done a lot of the filming already. It's just a matter of putting everything together. Now, before I go any further, I've got to give a shout out to the Facebook group DOF Reality Builders. And for any of you that are interested in any of the DOF Reality motion platforms, or if you actually own a DOF Reality platform, you need to go over to the Facebook group and join up because I couldn't have got this thing to where it is now without their help. And specifically, um, I want to give a shout out to Shalmer. Uh, he has been exceptional. He and I have been working through uh, some of the things that we found and he's been a tremendous asset in getting this uh, H6 up to speed with this new upgrade. So thank you guys. Thank everyone at DOF Reality Builders Group. Um, couldn't have done this without you, so thank you. So, what does SFU stand for? Well, I talked to DOF Reality and I'm like, what does it stand for? There's so many possibilities that come to mind. So, unfortunately, the answer isn't as glamorous as I was hoping it was, but SFU basically stands for, the S is for single nut, the F is for flange nut, and the U stands for din nut. And I don't get that, but maybe you say din nut differently in Ukrainian. I don't know. But that's what it really stands for. So um, once we got the kit in, it's, it's an amazing unit. Um, they've come up with some crazy gears and, and uh, the screw. Well, I'll just show you here. This is, this is basically what it does. And uh, this allows the H6 to have more motion. But we want to know how much more motion. So we came up with a test before we took the old gearboxes off to replace them. And we were trying to figure out what would be a good test that was consistent, that we'd be able to match the performance of the old gearboxes to the performance of the new ones. Well, anybody that's been to a carnival knows the roller coaster is the thing to do. That thing will throw you everywhere. So we actually purchased no limits to roller coaster simulator and we ran the old gearboxes through several roller coaster attempts and recorded not only the motion that you're seeing but we actually put a digital level on the chassis as well so we were able to record the actual numeric tilt 
that we were seeing from the old unit. Then once we got everything changed over and working, we did the same thing with the new gearboxes. And then we compared them side by side. So we're going to show that to you now so you can get an idea of what this upgrade does. And once you watch this, we'll be back to talk about a little bit more of our findings.
So as you can see from that side-by-side -side example, we got our two degrees of motion forward and our two degrees of motion backwards that we would have gotten from the P6 uh, unit. So totally thrilled about that. We were able to gain the motion from the P6 and uh, we were able to do it with the old H6 motor. So that's pretty exciting. Now, some of the other things about the new SFU upgrade, they're more efficient. So that means they can handle more weight. In fact, one of the issues we had early on was with the gas struts. And uh, we basically were told we didn't need the gas struts anymore. So we're still looking at potentially using gas struts because I think they'll help, but they're not needed anymore. Also, with the capacity, you can now put more weight on the motion platform. That means monitors. So DLF Reality is going to be releasing some monitor mounts for the motion platform. And you won't have to worry about overloading the motors like you did before. In addition to that, if it's heavy enough and it can handle the weight of monitors, that means direct drive steering wheels, that should be a thing. So this upgrade opens a whole um, myriad of opportunities that we were somewhat limited by previously. So very excited about that. There's a few things you need to be aware of if you're considering doing this upgrade. Uh, the first thing is you're probably going to need motion compensation. Um, I was able to not need it with the old gearboxes because it wasn't quite moving me far enough that I was coming out of the seat or anything like that. With this thing, when I do a carrier launch, I'm back behind the seat belt. When I'm in the race car, I'm sliding to the side outside of the cockpit. So motion compensation is something that you're going to have to look into adding. We're going to work on a way to do it for us, and of course I will do a video on what we find on that as well. I've already got a few ideas on what I want to do, so stick around for that. It definitely takes a little effort. Uh, the, the mechanical side of it and getting everything to work uh, definitely takes a little time, so don't plan on doing it in an hour and being done. Uh, like I said, we've been working on it for over a month between clearancing stuff and making sure things don't collide and all those sorts of things. Um, so be aware of the time commitment that you're probably going to be down on your motion platform. And I picked the absolute worst time to do my upgrade because Top Gun Maverick came out and I can't even fly. And you guys know I love flying. So be aware of that. Um, the other thing that you have to be aware of is in order to complete the upgrade, you have to let DOF Reality remote into your computer to do a firmware, firmware upgrade. Um, I know there are some of you out there that probably have concerns with anyone remoting into your computer. I did it. It was fine. We used TeamViewer. They came in five minutes later, got everything going, and, and left. So I didn't have any issues, but if that's a consideration or something you're concerned with, you're probably better off not to do the upgrade. In addition to that, there was a very interesting quirk that we found uh, that DOF Reality told us about when it comes to the motion of the platform when there's no power. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So one of my other concerns about the SFU upgrade is the fact that the way it settles now is a lot different. It doesn't actually freeze the motors in place when the power's off. And that includes the emergency stop button. So watch what happens when I hit the emergency stop. It basically still has to settle in place. It doesn't freeze in position as soon as that button's hit. The problem with that is if somebody's got a finger or something caught in this thing and you hit that, there's going to still be movement as this thing settles into position. Not ideal. The other problem with that is when there's no power, this thing moves very easily. So you can see I can just grab it, I can slide it wherever I want to when there's no power. So that can make getting in if it's turned off a little tricky because let's say it's sitting in a position like this and I go to get in and as soon as I put weight in it, now it slides. So just something to be aware of with the new upgrades and uh, just make sure that that's okay for your application. And then finally, we're seeing some strange movement occasionally. Um, I call it a rebound effect and we haven't quite sorted out what's causing it, but there are times when we've got a lot of motion going uh, on the platform, and it seems like the motion platform overshoots where it's supposed to be and then snaps back to where it was supposed to be. And I'll share with you what that looks like in the video here. 
I think that's just a firmware deal or some kind of weird bug that they'll work out. But I can tell you, um, it is a little immersion breaking and it feels a little odd when you're in the motion platform. So that's certainly something that I'm looking forward to them fixing or at least letting me know what we're doing wrong so we can fix it on our unit. But I have talked to some of the other users on the DOF uh, Reality Builders forum and they're experiencing the same thing. So I think that's just one of these little glitches that we have to work through. So those are the big concerns. Uh, again, you get the extra motion out of it. You get the extra uh, sway and you get the extra uh, surge. So that's been fantastic. So in a nutshell, that's kind of where we're at with the SFU upgrade. And, um, you know, if you think it's something that you're interested in, definitely uh, contact DOF and let them know. But um, I would tell you it's still a little early days. They're still putting together the instructions at this point, so the instruction kit is not as polished as I'd like it to be. Again, that's one of the reasons we're going to release the next parts of our series to hopefully help anyone that's doing the upgrade uh, be able to work through that process a little easier. So stay tuned for parts two and beyond, and uh, I hope you found this enjoyable and informative. And as always, remember to get your game on.